Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our channel in today's video. Zach and I are just going to be discussing some things about the commander format, so it should be a fairly quick video. We just wanted to uh, uh, address some new updates to the commander format and some new rule changes that uh, have, at least in my opinion, there are some pretty drastic changes in here for certain commanders. Definitely. And we really wanted to get this uh out in the out in the open and get ahead of it so that people know really like what's going on because some stuff's still a little bit unclear so we really want to make sure that everyone understands what's happening all right so what we're talking about is the new um rule in commander or i guess it's a change it's a new it's a new rule change i guess you could say and it goes as when your commander dies you can send it to the command zone and it will still trigger death triggers or exile triggers. I believe that's what it was, correct? I believe I think it was uh, the way it works. See, it's still kind of iffy on my part, too. But the way I'm, I'm looking pretty it sure up again. It... Okay. Commanders will now trigger death and exile triggers when they die and go to the command zone. <laughs> yeah, the way I saw it read was it they're is. in this sort of like weird death state b before they're qualified mm -hmm. so that they basically can go to the graveyard but then still be returned to the command zone so that the death triggers get triggered so for some players as you look at it you you could be like oh that's not bad like but that's very uh that's a very for drastic some change people that run for some people that run commanders that actually have death triggers as their ability this is like a whole game changer because yes because, because you don't have to send them to the graveyard yeah. you can get them back from the command zone because of uh that this new rule change instead of having your commander go to the graveyard zone just to trigger its death trigger and but now it just makes it so you it can go to command zone and still trigger a death trigger it really opens up a lot more um possibilities and slots for people that run decks like that because because i can see i can see a lot of card changes with this yeah because, because i can see people now reworking their entire decks because of it yeah because now um for example child of alara all right it has a death trigger of when it's sent to the graveyard from play you destroy all non-land permanents for that if you want to keep recurring the commander you would need a card to also exile your commander from the graveyard but now because of this new rule that's like you know one extra card slot because you can just get rid of cards that will say exile this card from your graveyard it opens right. up a and lot more also, possibilities you can also add a lot uh, better cards to your deck as well because you can take out the cards that you need to get your commander back onto the field because you can just get it back from the command zone instead. So that opens up a lot of slots in your deck for better cards because so, you don't have to constantly be getting it back from the graveyard because now you can just get it back from the command zone. You know, when I was um, when I was looking through like people's thoughts on this, a lot of you'd be surprised by how a lot of people thought like when commanders die and go to command zone that triggers death and exile triggers. Like you'd be surprised. They'd be yeah, like, it's, oh, it's I thought that's always been the rule. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. We should, we're should. we also going to go over some of the commanders that this will affect. We talked about the Child of Alara, which we'll also get back into that near the end of the video. Another one would be Omnath, Locus of... Is that Rage? Isn't the Rage one? I think... It's, yeah, it's Locus of Rage. The, the, the This the, video uh, is kind of done on the fly because we want it to be quick. <laughs> That's why. Okay, yep. Yeah, we, we, Omnath, we, uh, wanted to get Locus of Rage. It's a 7 spot. mana, 3 generic, 2 red, 2 green. It has the landfall abilities, you know. But one of the one of other Omnath's ability is um when Omnath, Locus of Rage, or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals 3 damage to target creature or player. Now, before this rule change, when Omnath was say destroyed you put it in the command zone it would not trigger that ability but because of this new rule change it will also trigger the lightning bolt pretty much which that three damage could be very important especially because you're going to be playing an omnath deck so most likely you can really that three damage could be like six damage or nine damage depending if you have uh damage doublers 
Right, because no one would have like knowingly sent Omnath to the graveyard just for the three damage. Yeah. But now because they can just get it like you know back from the command zone, now they'll just do it because they can, and that extra three damage, you know, if you keep having it killed and go to the command zone, it could eventually add up and you know be significant in the game. Also, another one. This one's very exciting for me because one, it's a Boros commander, and two, it's like. The ability is this, it's sort of like outside of Boros's colors, I guess. And this is Gerard Weatherlight Hero for two generic, a red, and white. First strike, when Gerard Weatherlight Hero dies, exile it and return to the battlefield all artifacts and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. <laughs> that's that's really, that's really for... nuts, especially for, for yeah. Boros to be able to just recur that. That's great. Right. Especially, yeah, because you can do it now, too. And it, it's also like the... Um, because when you exile it, it'll end up just going to the command yeah. zone. And this, you can just get it back. This also, and the death trigger still happens. This also ties in to the next five other commanders that we're going to talk about. They're the uh, champion of Kamigawa Dragons. So there's Kokusho, Taiga, Ryusei... Uh, I forgot the other ones. They're honestly, <laughs> those are the ones that you know people barely play with because I even forget their name. I I play with I play with the more. There's Star. yeah, there's the white one. I forgot the name and the green one. Yose is the is the Morning Star, and mm -hmm. then there's Koku Show. Those are the only one two ones I know because I mm -hmm. run them both. But, but I know though Ryusei is the one where when it dies, you deal five damage to each creature without flying. And then I believe the Evening Star one, which is white, when it dies, you get to tap five permanents your opponent's control, and you don't untap during their untap step. Now that, yeah, that's Evening Star. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. But with those, those can pretty much like synergize very well with Gerard, because then you could just keep recurring them. Tap your opponent's stuff, board wipe all their non-flying creatures, and then keep doing it over and over again. The good one, the Kaiga, the Tide Star, I think was the one. That's the blue but, one. Yeah, that's the one and where then, you get to and, and take then control. And Jugon, the Rising Star, is the green one. Oh, that gives okay. counters. Okay. And then Ryusei, the one that you, is, the, is the red one that deals mm -hmm. five damage. We just forget the white. People, <laughs> it's like... Who plays white anyways? I'm, I'm, Doesn't matter. I mean, white's, that, white was pretty good, in, in my opinion. <laughs> another one, another commander that's also uh, that's also affected by this new rule change is Rolesk Apex Hybrid for two generic, two green, and a blue. When Rolesk, Rolesk Apex Hybrid, Hybrid, I cannot speak, Enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. When Rolesk dies, proliferate, then proliferate again. Now that could be that's pretty good. You're you're gonna be playing you're playing in the colors of Simic. Simic has lots of good uh synergy when it comes to proliferating. You could have cards like Simic of Descendancy, or you could just run um uh Super Friends deck. So I think this rule is really going to change the dynamics of the format a lot. Like, decks are going to be doing what they're already... Like, Death Aristocrat decks are doing... Are going to be doing more, I guess. Just because their commander dies now. Right. And this is, is, this is good for uh, things as well. Because uh, cards that don't innately have the death triggers to them... But other cards that, uh, when a creature dies, they cause death triggers, you can also have your commander trigger those as well. And normally, you wouldn't be able to because it wouldn't be dying, it'd be going to the command zone. So this is like Dictative Airbos. Like, if you had a commander that died, this would be able to trigger your Dictative Airbos. So it's just an extra trigger instead that wouldn't have Which normally Which could be happened. very helpful, that extra death trigger. Right, right. We also have but, another... Commander that this is affecting it would be Elenda the Duskrose for two generic a white and a black 
Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Elenda to dusk grows. When Elenda dies, create X one one white vampire creature tokens with life link where X is Elenda's power. Yeah, I know Elenda is for a card is already expensive on its own. Like I've seen uh, certain prints of it for like eighteen. Some have gone up in other prices. Um, for for one that I've seen, uh, I know when I bought it, it was around eighteen. You, you could buy it probably from TCG player to, at eighteen. But with this new rule change, because it dies and you can get it back from the command zone, I'm expecting to probably see a spike in its price, like quite a bit. Yeah, with uh, this new with this new rule in mind, you really watch out for these cards because they're even more playable and they're even better than they ever were before. Like for example, know, it... on the on the day that this rule change was announced, the uh, the card Child of Alara from Conflux, it it cost about four dollars, foil being seven to eight dollars. The very next day, the price jump for non-foil being $26 and the foil being $40. Just because of this rule change. I know. I went to try to go buy uh, some copies of it because when it was still under 5 to $6 just the other day. Uh, where were you going to get the copies? Just asking, sold out. asking from, from a friend. Oh, yeah. Let me, plug this, let me plug this in. We're not sponsored or anything. We just really like to talk about it. If you're going to buy any <laughs> cards at all from anywhere... Do it through Card Kingdom. They have the best prices. And, you know, if you don't care about condition, and the condition's still good, but if you don't care about the condition, you can get the cards cheaper. Uh, shipping is really fastest fast. shipping in the, multiverse, in, in the multiverse, as they say it. That's true. Uh, and in, in my opinion, it's, it's much more um, kind of like f friendlier and, and just safer than if you were to go through TCG yeah. Player. Because in my opinion, TCG Player seems a little bit shady because you're getting it from multiple <laughs> proprietors and you don't really know where it's coming <laughs> from all the talking, time stop talking <laughs> i'm just saying that's how okay, I feel. okay and i trust card kingdom a lot more that's all i'm that's, no that's um, i'm i like them both but i remember uh what i like about card kingdom i remember when i was like once i order a card i like you know i instantly go to my email see like oh it's gonna ship in like you know four or five days mine whenever i order from card kingdom it says it's gonna it's like it's gonna come in in like four or five days but it always comes in in two i'm like what oh yeah no way it's really it's, it's so really fast, fast like that they don't even get the timing right like it's so <laughs> I, mine I comes in and, in two and... days but it said four or five no i love it too i love the packaging it comes in too because mm -hmm. it's with the stamp and then you'll always get them in a little plastic container which you can reuse and they come in with things. uh they give you free tokens which is very nice yeah they give you a little free like, custom night, token. Uh, token really nice custom token um i love that but yeah, I tried to go on uh, a card kingdom to try to buy a child of Lara when it was under five or six dollars, and they were all sold out. And all cards related to it as well, with similar death trigger stuff, was also all sold out. <laughs> and the price immediately shot up. It's a good thing you and... have a you have an Alenda at least, right? No, I, yeah, I do have an Alenda. Yeah, so nice. if that goes up, I'll I'll be lucky for that. Um, but yeah, this just. Be on the lookout for these types of cards because they're going to, if they haven't already, they're going to skyrocket in price. So, just a little bit of insider trading knowledge for uh, everyone out there who's more than just players, but are more collectors and, you know, <laughs> invested in the game. And we have one more rule. This one is in a change. Right. This one is a, is a, it's a new rule, implemented rule. You can now pay at sorcery speed, you can pay three generic mana. To uh to get your companion from your sideboard and put it into your hand, which in Commander I don't think that's gonna be utilized a lot. I don't see a way where, I don't see why you would want to um. Put that in your hand. Be, uh, besides, like you know, there's cards where it's like you can only play cards from your hand, like the new, uh, white card from. From a. Uh, I already forgot the name of the set. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ikoria, Ikoria, Lair Behemoth. There you go, there you go. Or or maybe like stuff where uh, stuff in your hand, like if you played Omniscience, the one. Yeah, stuff yeah, in that's hand, true. You don't have to pay their mana cost. So mainly just reasons like that. So it's not like a big change that is really effective, and there's only really small instances where it would come into play that you'd actually want to use it. Yeah, because but you I mean, you also remember it's. 
you have to do it in sorcery speed. Right, so you can only do it on your turn. Yeah, so you're phases, doing but... you're using that three mana on your turn. So if anything, it's a little bit extra helpful. Yeah. For certain cases, it's definitely it's it's not a bad thing. Uh, so yeah, at it's least, at least it's like bad. at least not a bad rule change. Yeah, it's, it's not like you're forced kind of to do it. Yeah, you know, it's just there if right. you need it, which is very nice. And... I think it, it, in certain situations it could come in handy. So very good. Oh. I just remembered, speaking of death and exile triggers, Spore Frog has a death trigger. It does have a death trigger. <laughs> it does trigger. have a death trigger. Yeah, that well, no, commander. it's not a death trigger, but it's a, it, you sacrifice it, but it, whatever, it dies anyways. And then it comes it's back if you're playing Marin. It's a sacrifice Marin. trigger, basically. <laughs> well, but, uh, no, it does have a death trigger, because w when it dies, you sacrifice it, it dies, and then it triggers your enemies, because they can't really deal combat damage. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, it's definitely it's triggering something. It's triggering. <laughs> well, but anyway, um, that's pretty much uh, all that really the new things that we really wanted to get out there and address. But there's a few things that we wanted to add, just kind of like I guess in our own words, spoilers for what could be coming up. Uh, did you want to take that away? Oh, oh, you caught me off guard. Um, well, yeah, think on the fly we, right now. Do we, we have a new schedule. Um, it's. Usually we try to upload one video a day, but we, because of how things have been going for us, we are changing our upload schedule. So, Zach, you can take it away. So basically, uh, our new schedule is roughly going to be one video a week, except for the weeks where the podcast that comes out normally on Fridays, if we're consistent with it, uh, the podcast that will come out on Fridays, um, will unless that coincides with another video that we have planned, then there'll be two videos a week. But roughly for like an average, it'll be about one video a week uh, of certain types, whether it's like deck techs mm. or videos like these or uh, or just a podcast. So every month you can what you can expect from us is at least two podcast episodes, one deck tech episode. And if it's like quick videos like this where we're just talking about something on the fly, then I guess that that will vary. Uh, don't forget about magic memes. and magic we can at least memes. Do that once a month. So that's also once a month. I'm not giving up on magic memes. You know, memes it are, seems like they don't. We get need memes. Much of a response, but I like the concept. Yeah. and I'm gonna keep going for we it. We need I'm memes because like at a time like this where everyone's sad, we we need memes to keep us happy and and to. Level, level our sanity that yeah the memes will always be certain that's true and we might uh probably be able to put out i think magic memes next monday for whatever week that this uh comes out yeah our time it should be tomorrow uh if we're lucky or or the following day but yeah and to close out uh i just wanted to say that there will be a podcast episode uh, this week, so there will be two episodes this week, or, or two uh, videos this week out. Uh, we are going to uh, hopefully be talking about the new cards that are, and spoilers that have been shown for Corset 2021, as well as some uh, Double Masters stuff. And I know for me, there's one card that so far has really caught my eye in, in 2021 Corset. Yes, and that's Spore Frog. The, um, yes, Spore Frog. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not right. What was it? Spore frog? No, now I got spore frog on the. Plane. It was uh, sorry. It's chromatic yeah. orrery, uh, and I'm not gonna really. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm just gonna put it up on the screen as like a quick spoil. We're gonna talk more about. Oh wait, it you're editing videos, this video? But I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> nothing crazy. <laughs> just a little few things here and there, like the rules I'm gonna put up and stuff like that. But yeah. Um. But yeah, this card we're gonna talk more in depth about. But, but you know its ramifications and everything because this is a really really good uh, artifact. And Adrian, did you have anything you wanted to put up? Okay, just a disclaimer. The only... If we do not get videos up on time, we swear to you, it's not us being lazy. We really do have, like, problems with our um, editing software sometimes. The, we well, really we try our best to upload really the videos, busy, though. Or, most of the time, it's the complexity of what we're trying to do. It's... Is so, yes. And it takes... I never, I always overestimate how long, or I underestimate how long it's going to take for a video to render because I never take it into account. I expect, okay, I'll get a video up by three, and then it's already, you know, I took it took me an hour or two to edit, and then I'll be able to put it up, and then I don't realize that it's going to take like two hours to render, 
and then that shoots away the schedule and then I end and up then sometimes as you're rendering it crashes and you have to like redo everything yeah it's really uh i know it's a very big thing and, and we and it, it would make sense for us to you know earlier in the week do this so that we have more time in case something happens but we're just so busy that we don't have as much free time so we're really kind of strapped but we we do try to get the videos out as soon as we can and and uh, on a, a good schedule before we end things off i also i just want to um get the world out word out there that we do have a discord so if you want to come join it's pretty it's pretty cool it's chill we can just chat talk about cards talk about whatever yeah, the uh the link for that is in our channel uh Board. And guess what the Discord oh. name is? Let's talk on Discord. <laughs> Genius. Oh, yeah. Genius. Who we thinks got, of that? We got, I know, Who thinks so of awesome. that? We got multiple different uh, discussion forums for uh, all different things. Uh, for if you're looking for card types, strategies, combos, uh, whatever. And we had a bunch of different uh, voice chats as well. The only thing we don't have is one di for a di just a straight discussion about Spore Frog. And I don't understand it. Also, Why don't we have one? in the... In this video, there is a hidden spore frog somewhere. See if you can find it. There's always a hidden spore frog. There is. I'm going to try to make it a thing in every single video. Sometimes it's easy to spot. Sometimes it's not. And I want to make sure that people are noticing it. Sometimes there's a All spore right. frog on the spore frog. And people just can't. <laughs> right. It. And sometimes they overlap. And sometimes there's Or not, we're just but... saying that so people will look for them. And there's nothing if, there. If you find it. <laughs> if you find it, comment when in the video you found it. And we will. You won't get anything for it, but we're just gonna. Well, no, we will. We'll it. send you Zach's very first deck, like his deck yeah. list on why it yeah. had eight lands. Yep. <laughs> You'll get that sneak preview. The, if you're the, the lucky deck person. tech. Everyone's gonna be wondering why is there only eight lands. <laughs> yeah. If you if you like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you comment uh, where you found the spore frog. And if you do all those things, then you might be the lucky person to get my first crappy deck list of when I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> a spoiler alert, the commander was... Oh, crap. What was the it... Vela the Night Yeah, Club. yeah, yeah, Vela. A very interesting type of commander. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, but that pretty much does it for this video. Uh, Adrian, do you have anything else to add? I think I know what you're going to say. Uh, spore frog. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, Thanks for watching, everyone. In the next video. See you later.